In our next example, we're going to calculate how much heat is being radiated from the human body. And let's say that a person doesn't have any clothes on, so the skin is open to the atmosphere, and so radiation heat is being lost from the skin. How much heat does a person typically lose? And the way to calculate that is, again, using the dQ dt is equal to E sigma times the surface area times the temperature to the fourth power. So here the emissivity of the skin is probably around 0 0.9, so this is 0 0.9. Sigma is still the same, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter times Kelvin to the fourth power. The surface area of the skin, a typical human body, is about 1.5 square meters. So 1.5 meters squared, not just an approximation, just to give us a kind of a feel for what this is equal to. And then the temperature of the body. Now typically the temperature of the body is uh, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about equal to 37 degrees centigrade. Now of course we have to convert that to Kelvin. To, add, to convert that to Kelvin we have to add 273, which means it's about equal to 310 Kelvin. That's the temperature we're going to use in the equation, so 310 Kelvin to the fourth power. So, how much is that equal to? 0.9, <coughs> excuse me, times 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 1.5 and times 310 to the fourth power equals, and it's actually an amazing 707 watts. Well, that's actually quite a bit. Now, what we're doing here is we're ignoring something. We're, we're simplifying, oversimplifying things. And sure enough, if the body was placed in deep space where there's no radiation reaching the body, the body would indeed radiate out 707 watts. And even though on the Earth, here in the room, the same thing would happen, at the same time, the body is also receiving energy. And so far, we've been ignoring that. Now, in this problem, we're going to no longer ignore that. So we also have to worry about the energy that's being received by the body, by the outside atmosphere. And so even though it's radiating out this much heat, it's also receiving a certain amount of heat. And really what we should be calculating is the delta, the difference in the heat. So really what we need to calculate is the dq dt net, which can be written as E sigma A. That's all the same, but the temperature will be the temperature of the body to the fourth power minus the temperature of the environment to the fourth power, because that's the heat that the body will then be receiving. So that's the adjustment to the calculation. So this now would become 0 0.9 times 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter, Kelvin to the fourth power, times still the area of 1.5 meters squared. But now, on the temperature, we're going to take the temperature of the body 310 Kelvin and raise that to the fourth power and we're going to then subtract the temperature of the environment. Now if you're in a room, the walls typically would be at room temperature, let's say 20 degrees centigrade. So at 20 degrees centigrade, that is equal to about 293 Kelvin and that we have to place in here. So 293 Kelvin also to the fourth power and that would then be the net energy lost by the body. So uh, let's see here, that would be uh, 0.9. Actually, I'm going to work that out first by itself. So 310 to the fourth power minus 293 to the fourth power. And we take that and multiply that times 1.5 times 5.67 e to the 8 minus times 0.9 equals. And then you find that the net heat loss is much smaller. It's only about 143 watts. So that is a lot more realistic. So the typical energy loss from a body that's not clothed is roughly in this neighborhood, of course not in this neighborhood right here. But that's how you calculate heat loss, or at least the net heat loss of an object if it also receives energy from the surroundings.